diagram, which basically tells you that you need, you know, the place to be half as, half as uh, close as half to the ball that curves the target. If it's more or less, or if it's more that's going to curve too much. If you get the path going, path going the same direction as the face, you're just going to get pushes and pulls. That's the easiest way to look at it. But that's sort of a new diagram of the ball flight laws I thought was probably the best I've ever seen. Okay, so let's talk about pattern development. Let's talk about, you know, what are we, what are we teaching, right? What, I'm going to talk a little bit about what I teach, what I believe in. Uh, I think teaching golf is a moving target. You know, all my students look different. You know, I don't have guys that are, you know, all a certain style or a certain <coughs> method. Uh, I teach what the ball is telling me to teach. All right, so I don't know if you guys have, have seen the, uh, it was in the early 1990s, Jim Hardy did an excellent presentation at one of the early teaching summits. Anybody seen that on ball flight? We call it correction versus creation. That's changed my teaching and the way I look at golf swings. You seen it, Fred? It was awesome. So he basically talked about how, you know, I look at a golf swing like a math equation. You have steep elements and you have shallow elements. Right, you, call them, you basically got to have the same amount of balls in the air in order to get the playable ball flight. Right? So if we got too many, if we got guys that are too steep, all right, if we got guys that are too steep, and then we're going ahead and we're taking taking away, you know, too many elements on that side, then we get unbalanced and we get unplayable ball flight. Right? So you got to look at it as basically I look at it as plane being zero. You know, steep being maybe positive and then shallow being a little bit more negative. So when we're looking on making changes here, and I'll talk about this in more detail as we go forward, then we've got to make sure that we're pulling the right pieces away from the student or they're going to get worse. And that's, that's really the simple thing. So I look at it as, you know, we've got to have the same amount of steep elements and shallow elements to balance out the golf swing in order for us to, to make solid contact and hit it better. But that's what all students want to do, right? If we're going to grow the game, What's the number one thing students want to do? They want to hit it solid. Have fun. Yeah, have fun, absolutely. It's not even fun when they're hitting it on the toe of the heel and they're shanking it and the top of it. I don't care what they say, it is not any fun to shoot 120 when they've been playing the game for several years. So we've got to help these, these players play better, hit it more solid, and have a lot more fun. So correction versus creation is simply, as he said, Mr. Hardy said, correction is more Impact alignments, right? A lot, of, a lot of teachers may start from impact and work backwards, which I think is a fine way to teach. I do that sometimes. Or creation with the more committed student that has time to practice and has time to make changes is creating and maybe changing what you feel like is affecting impact. All right? There's two ways to look at it. Now, I probably spend more time doing that with my uh, more serious students. When you got the player that comes to you and says, I just want to hit it better, I play twice a year. You know, I'm going to show them, okay, here's what we're trying to get there to get an impact. All right, let's make some changes in the fundamentals. Let's get you hitting the ball up in the air. Relative to the guy that's serious and can practice three times a week, comes out, you know, I'm playing golf, I'm playing the club championship, i got six months. All right, let's start to build a golf swing that's going to hold up under pressure. That's a little different. Method teaching. As like I said, I'm not a method teacher, but I do appreciate the methods. I understand the methods. What's the number one method, method that's going on right now? S and T. Stack and tilt, right? Okay. You can bash it. You can say what you want about it. There's a lot of value in it. Like I said, don't bash anything until you understand it. Two years ago, I had no clue what these guys were trying to do. Now I understand it pretty well from spending, spending time with some of these guys that teach it. You know, reading the books, looking at the DVDs, talking to some of the, you know, talking to Mike and Andy. These guys, I mean, they have a system, right? I don't agree it's going to work with everybody, but they have a system. And I even use some of the pieces in my teaching occasionally to get a desired result. I'll talk about that here in a minute when we talk about pivot. Pattern options and matching components. And that's what I'm talking about. And sometimes when you need change, you gotta have you gotta have an understanding of what's going to match up. And it's just like it's just like what Mr. Hardy talked about. And that's why, you know, for a stack and tilt, you're not gonna see stack and tilt guys that have their arms up like this, because it doesn't match 
a more of a, a center pivot or a more forward weight shift. Right? This is a steepening move. So you have to have matching <coughs> one plane, which is more in and up. So they're going to tell you to come swing the club a little more in and around to allow them to keep the club on plane and also get you know where they can hit low point, which is important. <coughs> the other way would be you got somebody that say they got they got high hands and they have this big drop move to the inside. You may not want to lower their arm, right? We may want to leave that alone. We may want to work on something else where we might want to keep them a little more centered in their pivot so that they don't get the club so low on the inside. Or we may want to get them to over rotate their upper body to keep the club from getting inside. So you just got to make sure you're matching up what what works. Club face alignments and, and path and, and shape are really got to match up in order for us to help our students hit the ball better. So, like, so what are you teaching, right? Club face angles, like I said, the D plane, you better be aware of what, what's going on with the face for sure. Three ways to change the club face. One way is the grip, right? If we're going to get a little stronger with the grip, that's going to tend to shut the face. A little weaker with the grip if you turn the hands to the left, which some people need. And that's what's, you know, when we talk about fundamentals, you really should come up with a different name because not everybody needs the same grip, right? Everybody's got a different grip. It's all about what, again, what kind of alignments do you want to get the desired ball play? I think John Jacobs said that a long, long time ago. All, right? All we're trying to get is to a, a impact alignment that creates the ball flight that we want, that's predictable. So. Second way is to change the way they set their hands. All right, we've got we've got rollers here that, that cut the cut the left wrist. That's going to open the face. We've got more guys that bow it. That's going to close the face. That's going to change the, the club face a lot at the top. It's going to be more closed, square to open to whatever. And like I said, I don't, almost don't even use that term anymore. But if it's closed, closed to what? All right. How many times do you see guys that are like this that fade the ball? Sure, it happens, right? Well, club swings left to the pat, or the club pat swings left to the face. It's going to fade. How's the azimuth faded? Swings across a little bit, All right? So that's the second way. Third way would be the release. Okay, so we've got different releases that match up again. If we got more of a shut club face, right? We might have to teach them to have an underhand release, which is more, you know, a little bit less forearm rotation, like a Zach Johnson, stronger grip. Fast rotation. Not going to teach that so they can't move the body very fast. All right, they're going to they're going to be more of the flip release guys. So if the face is more square to open, like an Ernie Els or Rod Pampling, some of these guys that, that <coughs> play, even a even a Chad Campbell, and they got to have a little more form rotation at the bottom, a little bit tougher to time. But again, it can work for for different players. So you know, golf machine will call them angled you know angled hinge and and, and so forth different terminology. You just got to match up what's happening at the bottom with what's happening at the top. You, know, you got guys that close it too soon, close it too late, <clears throat> you're going to get different ball flight. I had a guy yesterday on the lesson tee that came out and said, man, I'm just hooking everything. You know, I got my grip got my grip on like they had kind of a strong grip. And I said, well, what are you trying to work on? He said, well, I'm trying to bow my left wrist at the top. I'm going, all right, so now you want to hook it more, right? But this is something that he saw, you know, a player on TV do or one of his friends said, well, everybody seems to have a flat left wrist at the top, so I think that's what you need to do. Right? So he's like, man, I, 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 can't, I can't hit it. And he said, he said, it's slang pucks all day long. He goes, I know it's something simple. And I go, all right, you're going, to kill, you're going to kill me when I do this. And I said, just rotate your left hand over like that. I said, don't think about anything at the top. He starts hitting just tight little draws out there. He goes, you got to be kidding me. I'm like, dude, what you were doing was not matching up your components. I mean, simple as that. So being able to make a simple adjustment like that can change, you know, can change the game big time. So club face, face angles are huge. You know, swing plane, swing, swing shape. I'm not sure anybody out there would say they're not teaching swing plane. Because, you know, it's built right in. We talk about, you know, how do we use the, how do we use the club, how it's built. One of the first things that I tell my students when I bring them to the video room, right, there's two things that good players do. They swing it on the shape of the, sw of, the, of the shaft, and they strike the golf ball with a handle that leans forward. A shaft that leans forward. Right? Once they understand that, then you can start to build in 
whatever principles you like, whatever things you believe in. But there are some patterns that I think that don't work. You know, and, and I have my ideas of, of why. Because, you know, I, I appreciate the fact that, you know, we always want to get the club on, on plane coming down. But there are some takeaway things that affect that. Right? Because a lot of people say, well, I don't care what happens in the backswing. I'm just going to get you on plane and downswing. I don't believe in that totally. Okay? I just don't think, I mean, if you, I've got 3,000 pro, pro swings in my database, and I may have 1% of them to get the club like this. There's something to that, right? I mean, I don't, I don't know. You tell me. So, I don't like to see the club behind the club behind the hands in, in the takeaway. And you can say, well, Sam Steve was there. There's some, you know, Raven Floyd was there. Some guys. I don't think they were trying to do that. Pretty good athletes as well. So I, I like to see the club head stay in front of the hand. I'm pretty big on that. I think there's two ways to take it away. I call them one piece, two piece. You can you can call them whatever you want, but. I think you know, some work for some, some work for others. And that's where you got to figure that out. And that's the genius in the coach is saying, all right, well, you know, if i got somebody that continuously rolls it and, they, and they're trying to hinge it, and this is what they feel like is a, is a good hinge, then I'm probably going to give them more of a one-piece move. I'm going to tell them that, all right, I want the back of your left hand to stay cupped. I want you to go ahead and take it away with your arms and shoulders and chest. And that's going to keep that club out front. And what it's going to do is going to allow them to get the club in balance. And this is my theory of why this doesn't work, is the club head's too heavy in this position. It's not in balance. It's not light. So it usually forces them to lift it up to the top, come out of a posture, and then the pattern goes this way. Right? So we've seen most of the good players are somewhere out in here. I know there's some guys that are here and here. Some guys are perfect, but they're usually somewhere on top of the shaft plane. When I teach downswing plane, something I learned from Chuck Cook, which I thought was, was really good. When we set up to the golf ball, we're not, we usually don't sole the club flat if you're in a good position. Right? If you do, you look like you're trying to play natural golf, maybe. So, I hope there's no natural golf present. It's not, it's not a bad thing. So, as you set up to the toe, the toe is a little bit off the ground, right? But when we're teaching downswing plane, that's really not the true, the true downswing plane. Right? So I'll draw a line that comes up just below the right elbow that's going to allow for a couple degrees of droop. Club's going to, club's going to bow as it comes down. But also, it's going to allow them to get back to, if the club's fit properly, we can talk about fitting later, but if it's fit properly, that's where we want them to hit it, right? So I like it going back on the shaft plane, as closer, just slightly on top, and then coming back down on some people call it impact plane or, or elbow plane. Um, especially for an iron. For a driver, I'll let them get it a little bit more below because, going well, back to track man, good drivers of the golf ball hit slightly up on it. While the ball's forward, you hit it a little bit more in front of the circle as it goes up and to the left. So I will let them get a little bit, little bit lower in swing plane. So, you know, an easy way to get people to understand swing plane is just throw one of these guys on there and say the target line is just is just here, as we get halfway back and here, we're going to have the club pretty much pointing somewhere inside or on the target line. And it goes to the top. You said if you're hand candy, you like them this way a little bit more. If you're, you know, a little straighter up here. So again, not, doesn't have to be perfect. Understand it. A laid out position is going to tend to want to get steeper on the way down. Across the line position is going to tend to want to get shallower on the way down. So I like to get them fairly straight up here with a club face that, that matches. And that way when they come down.